Sometimes I lose my way I get so confused and ill at ease Whenever our silent talk breaks down And words get in between us If it's just a passing breeze Please find some way to let me know Cause I could fall a long way down Before I'd realize it You know you can't believe your dreams right from the start You can't rely on them that's a certain way to wind up with a broken heart. So for this afternoon, be with me and I will be with you. And when our words have found a voice, then life can be resumed. <laughs> You know, you can't believe your dreams right from the start You can't rely on them That's a certain way to wind up With a broken heart so for this afternoon be with me and I will be with you and when our words have found a voice then life can be resumed ah, No more talk, for or against. Listen, open-hearted, hear like a conductor. Feel connections, amass compassion. Clean out the crevices, eliminate verbal bullets, bombshell thoughts. Search for higher self, deep in silence, deeper in silence, in the depths. Keeping peace requires eagle's vigilance, total presence. So there, you smell possibility ever ready to choose love. Come to know war, inside and out. Embrace its conflicts. Invite enemies to dine. Try not to want. Travel vast spaces. 
knowing nothing, asking nothing. Witness lights slivers, illuminate footpaths to love. Thank you. Standing on the threshold of freedom, envisioning dawn, feet solidly absorbing energies, seeing the unity of living species, knowing my world, free to behold blue planet without divisive constraints, harmonious, teeming with life. Standing here on the threshold, I sense no limits to understanding, nor questioning. Discovery is at every turn of head and heart. I explore, experience doorways unknown, witness their realities, multi-dimensional living, unanswered questions, galaxies of possibilities. On the threshold of freedom, barriers down freely, join hands and heart with my fellow living beings, human, plant, animal. Black night lit by stars unfolds vast space, energies, ancestral spirits, homes. Feel the rising feelings, claim universal heritage, sing to celebrate freedom's blessings, beat the drum of unity on this threshold of freedom. is for each of us at war to end all of our fighting for just one moment more for if just one moment more keeps adding to one moment more one moment at a time we'll find there's no more time for war Peace begins at home, I'm told, deep within one soul. When we make our peace within, it's then we can live whole. But I've been living half of who I could be for this life. Inside me there dwells judgment, envy, arrogance and strife. Now I do try my hardest to drive my demons out, left to my own devices. All hope turns into doubt, for I've been shown time after time, it's love that heals what ails. No matter what I do, it's only love that can prevail. All I want for Christmas is for each of us at war to end all of our fighting for just one moment more. For if just one moment more keeps adding to one moment more, one moment at a time we'll find there's no more time for war. Thank you. The palm at the end of the mine beyond the last thought rises in the bronze decor. A gold-feathered bird sings in the palm without human meaning, without human feeling, 
a foreign sound. You know then that it is not the reason that makes us happy or unhappy. The bird sings, its feathers shine. The palm stands at the edge of space. The wind moves slowly in the branches. The bird's fire-fangled feathers dangle down. I am a Red Sox fan. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I go to a lot, I'm a, in fact, I'm a card-carrying member of the Bo Sox Club, the Red Sox fan club. And uh, they, their, uh, their brochure says, uh, experience Red Sox baseball like you never have before. Okay, well, it's, this is a bit of an overstatement because to really experience Red Sox baseball, you really have to go, with, go to a game with myself and my friend, my longtime friend from college, Phil. Because when you sit next to Phil and I at a Red Sox game, you get both the tradition of what happens on the field as well as some tradition that happens in the stands. Take, for example, this one little uh, routine that uh, two of us do every game. Uh, usually about the third or fourth inning, the grounds crew comes roaring out onto the field, pulling behind them these large metal things to smooth over the infield, cover up some of the uh, spike marks from before. And uh, when this happens, as it does at every game, uh, Phil and I uh, look to the person to our right and to our left sitting there, and we say, you know, uh, if you think your job is bad, their job's a real drag. <laughs> That's kind of the response that we get. We, we do get various responses from people next to us, from people uh, with large guffaws. Some people really love it. Other people just kind of, <sighs> brother. Give us that look. Some people leave and gives us a little more leg room at Fenway, which is always a good trick. But before they can do all that, we always say, oh, but that guy over by first base who's raking up over there, he has the best job because he really rakes it in. <laughs> more groans. And before anybody left leaves, we always say, but you know, it takes a lot of pull to get these jobs. OK. Well, all right. So much for that. We have two goals in doing that. One is that someday somebody will sit next to us and say that. Uh, the second goal was that maybe the Red Sox or some team would put this up on the scoreboard. Uh, and so with that in mind, I, I knew one of the people in marketing at the Red Sox, so I sent her a, uh, an email and said, gee, I have two requests. This was a number of years ago. And I said, uh, one of them is that, uh, is that you would put this little story, which I, a little bit I explained, up on the scoreboard. And I said, the second was, uh, gee, could you help me get some green monster seats? Well. I get back a very nice little email. She said, Dave, the first one is a bit of a tall order, but there's four green monster seats in the mail to you. So sometimes these little ditties, these little experiences, they do pay off. Thank you very much. <laughs>
night after night, defending our nation with honor and might. Standing out here in the dark lion's den, when I'd rather be counting your kisses again. You are so far away. Nervous, unsure, three, four, confident, pure. All kisses special, some better, I guess. But the best kiss of all is the one that comes next. Thank you. Skeleton key. Starlight dimmed, moonlight brightest, fullest. Skeleton key awoke, unlocked, danced with remembrances dead. Moonlight waned, darkest, deepest. Starlight glowed, remembrances dead, revels ended. Skeleton key slept, door locked again. And then I also happen to think of it in haiku, five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables. Skeleton key found, memories passed, then locked up, skeleton key lost. Thank you. Two different colored woods divide my comfy living room in half. One darkly somber and one sleek, mahogany and Danish teak. My grandma's glass doored cabinet stares down upon the sideboard's teak, which was my husband's when he died. The old and new are side by side. Each calls to me across the room, we're here, we're special. Why did you let in that out of fashion freak? Mahogany and Danish teak. My mind's eye strokes the tall old piece, glass doors above, three drawers below. It holds noisemakers, photos, pride. The old and new are side by side. Within the teak lie yellow plates adorned with painted peasant folk, while songbooks help my heart to speak. Mahogany and Danish teak. Their layered memories compete, their outsides neither mesh nor blend. Two views of life, one tall, one wide. The old and new are side by side. Yet, deep within, there's harmony. They both hold family and song. Each voice has proved to be unique. Mahogany and Danish teak. The strands of love and song live on, though sometimes seeming to collide through sliding doors and glassed antique. The old and new are side by side, mahogany and Danish teak. When the moon sits low on the horizon, it's real big. It's in your face, the face of the inky darkness. The night suddenly deepens and slows almost to a stop. You can hear the light sailing over the tops of trees, stealing the night from forgetful squander. And then it deepens. And as if pirouetting into a shadow, the night calls and beckons you into the brazen moonlight. You take the step that matters. All the moments of your history converge. And there, in the fullness of the moon, you give yourself over to destiny. Thank you.
In the year 1995, in a suburb there's no need to name, lived a man who by the grace of God still was alive, though his living was smothered in shame. He'd a house and a wife and a kitchen so bare with a fine polyurethane floor and three teenagers trying to become who they were that he couldn't talk to anymore. Now he'd been looking for work now for such a long time when a job offer came without a reason or rhyme and they called him associate and they smiled when he came and they gave him a shirt with his name Then his wife got a job at less than half of his pay And he got a second job too And their income went up in a vague sort of way And they saw that it still would not do Still they hoped and they prayed Maybe bright days would dawn while their children sucked up MTV And these children saw no reason to carry on To a future as plain as could be Now when the electricity was shut off on the 5th of July That a crisis had come was too hard to deny Still they watched and they waited for his further plans Eating candlelight dinners from cans When the leaves fell he raked as he always had done while his children observed Halloween Pulled his old snow thrower out in the November sun Filled it up with last year's gasoline But the first silent holy night his chest stung As he pulled on the recoil in vain there was death in the air he pulled into his lung And the gentle snow covered his pain Twas cholesterol killed him, that's what they all said As they lowered him down to his last earthly bed And what other earthly reason would they dare to name Without breaking the rules Once on a time there lived a girl, a lively sprite who wandered far and wide. She was her mother's wondrous pearl, until at last she deigned to be a bride. She bore two children for her mate and set them on their way. She gave her youth to toil and care, but also found some joy in every day. So many years have come and gone, the lively one is now her daughter's son. And as she holds him on her knee, she marvels how her precious time has flown. 
And who's that pale and weathered crone who mocks her from the glass? She knows the face must be her own, yet looks so little like that bygone lass. Yet none around her seem to care that she has lost the fickle bloom of youth. The love surrounds her like a prayer and mirrors back a different kind of truth. That while a life robustly lived on body takes its toll, the gift it brings is fair exchange, a deeper wisdom of the heart and soul. So don't despise the passing years, nor fear the mortal ravages of time. The labors of a life well lived will fill your heart with melody and rhyme. And when you're old, as I am old, and time is running fast, just feast your eyes on those you love and throw away that wretched looking glass. Thank you.